Hello there! My name is Taryn Lee Crenshaw. Today we're going to be talking about intersectionality, which is a foundational concept in sociology and many sociological understandings and sub-lessons. Throughout this video, you will learn what intersectionality is, as well as the ways that it is relevant when analyzing society and people. When learning a new concept, I find that it is helpful to begin with a couple of key questions that sort of guide our journey through something that might be unfamiliar. So let's let our first question be, what is intersectionality? In the first place, right? And then let's let our second question be, what is actually intersecting? So when we come to the root word of intersectionality, it is intersect. What is actually intersecting when it comes to society, people, and sociological understandings? I also think it might be helpful for us to use an analogy when we're trying to get this basic idea of what intersectionality is. So, so let's take two streets and think of, well, what happens when two streets cross or come together? Well, they come together at the intersection. Often at the intersection, there's a stoplight or a stop sign, but they intersect at the intersection. So let's let our, our, our definition of intersectionality be the joining of multiple, so at least two, entities, the joining of multiple entities, and allow this, this basic definition to um, take us into applying it sociologically to intersectionality, all right? So then we say, okay, well, what is actually intersecting when it comes to society and people? Well, what is society comprised of? Society is comprised of people along with their ideals, what they believe in, right? As well as their social standards, and ways of being. So then we say, okay, well, well what, are, what are people made of? Well, people are made of identities. Think of identity as the window into seeing how and who someone really is. So in sociology, identity is seen as that which people define themselves by. Let's let this be our working definition of identity. It is the condition or character as to who a person is. This includes their qualities and their beliefs. And all of these things distinguish or identify that individual person. So it's our identities, really, that drive our sense of self, our value systems, and our perceptions it's how we see the world around us as well as ourselves in relation to the world around us. So basically identity is what connects the individual to the collective whole of society. And this connection is taking place through, through a social recognition. You socially recognize, you say, oh, hey, like, oh, I get that. That's, that's part of who I am or I identify with that kind of thing. So now we say, well, what are identities made of, right? So we've gone through each one of these. We've said, okay, well, what is actually intersecting in terms of society? Well, what is society made up of people? What are people made up of identities? Now, what are identities made up of? Identities are made up of what we feel as well as what we are taught or, or told, passed down through social conditioning. And really what is meant by this are the messages, the messages that are received from society and those around us. French philosopher Louis Althusser offers a helpful analysis to really understanding this system of message giving and receiving and the ways that we as human beings are actually compelled to not just listen to these messages, but to follow them, to adhere to them, to live up to them. At the heart of his theory are what he calls ideological state apparatuses, which though might sound a little heady and maybe a little overwhelming at first, is really meaning just that there are meaning givers. There are meaning givers that give 
meaning and messages through social conditioning that then have a larger impact on how we see ourselves and one another, our identities. So what are, what are these meaning givers? Who are these meaning givers? Well, there are parents and friends and family. They are also our communities like school, sports, or even church or religious affiliated communities. And there are also media, both visual as well as audio. So what we see on TV and hear in music and our families and our communities, all of these are meaning givers. And they create our social standards. They give meaning to how we, to, to what is of social standard to us in a particular society. So because human beings are psychological and sociological creatures, we then take these meanings, we take these social con conditionings and the social standards that are given meaning through social conditioning, and we internalize it. We internalize it. It becomes part of who we are. It impacts how we identify as also what we perceive what we perceive as value, what we perceive as, as important, and what we ultimately prioritize and privilege in a given society. So now you might ask, okay, well, you know, Taryn, what are these messages now? We know what the, who's giving the messages, but what are the messages and what do they pertain to? Well, they pertain to social constructs. And just like the two words indicate, they are socially constructed as if buildings, you know, built from, from material that, that house meaning. So what is socially constructed? Well, race, class, gender, sexuality, age, even that which we associate with body being disability or ability. All of these things are socially constructed. And you'll also notice that each one of these social constructs is actually as well a house for our identities as well. We see that our, we identify with each one of these categories. So it is a personal identity as well as a means for which we as social beings organize ourselves, identify ourselves collectively. So then you might say, okay, well, how does this all relate to intersectionality? Well, that's precisely it. Each one of them is intersecting. Each one of them comes together, is, is, um, is an entity that is joining together through which we see the larger relationship between all of them. And this is just um, a, a short list of social constructs. There are more social constructs, but these are the main ones that are written about in the academic canons associated with sociology. So then we say, okay, well, social constructs are also having intersecting identities associated with them, as well as intersecting histories and are dependent upon time and location. They are not fixed. They are not static. They, they change and can change over time and then also change based off of location, when and where. They are not the same. The way that we talk about race today is very different than how we talked about race a hundred years ago. Or you might be able to talk about sexuality in one way in one part of the world, but not be able to use those same terms and understandings in another part of the world. So social constructs are, are ever shifting. They're ever moving as well based off of that society. So the intersectionality of social constructs and identities and histories allows us to see that there are even larger relationships taking place. In order to thoroughly understand one, we have to do so in relation to the others. And really with this, this concept of intersectionality, we set ourselves at a vantage point to begin to break down historical systems of hierarchy and oppression, which we will be doing in our future videos. So thanks for tuning in and look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.